This is scene two, but before, let me just show you, I can, this is the history of this diorama. I made all, some people are just gonna think it's just toys, but it's all serious, and I'll tell you as we go. I wanna show you first that this was my living room in uh, the North Atlanta, it's called Marietta. Marietta, Georgia house, you can see the fireplace, and up here was the red uh, cardboard I talked about. If you look closely, you'll be able to see the characters that are in front of you now. So you'll know that this, in fact, and we have the original photos with the dates on the back. You can see that the telephone had a cord on it, which we haven't had those in years. And you can't see, but there's a little black cat sitting there, and she's been dead for years, decades. So there was the cat. There's the phone that has the cord on it. Here are some, you can see some of these cardboards that are just full of lessons and maps and every kind of thing, trying to document everything I saw during, and then that, and I don't know how long the vision took. It might have been one second. I don't know. But I know I spent 20 hours documenting before I started the charts and graphs. So this is when I awoke. I don't know why, but I knew the name, that this, this vision had a name, but it was diary, and then my life in the time of the Antichrist. So Teresa and I just called it DOA, which means dead on arrival, but we've always just said this is DOA. So this is DOA and the start of the diorama before the house was completely full of dollhouses. Now I'll show you the next one. When I moved away, when my whole family moved away, uh, we had been very happy and did very, very well in Atlanta. Um, my daughter, her husband, we all loved Atlanta at the time. And we, did, we wouldn't have moved, but I was doing not well. I was, you know, had to ride the scooter if I made it to Walmart, and I came home exhausted. So uh, she said, okay, I want you to move in with us. And we found this wonderful, top-notch, world-class doctor for multiple sclerosis, and he works at Vanderbilt, and he's very high. He's Dr. Harold Moses. So Dr. Moses agreed to see me. It took at least three months or more to get an appointment. And uh, I set this back up uh, when we, after we moved to Nashville, and that's where Vanderbilt is. So we all moved to all, meaning my daughter, her husband, uh, we all moved, and I lived with them for a while. I don't know how long, maybe a couple years, I don't know. And uh, so this was the diorama south of Nashville. And then I will show you just a quick photo of what you see right now. This is, I am in um, Ecuador, South America. I did not want to leave because I love my grandchildren more than my own life. I'm not kidding. Some of you understand. And Father very clearly said I was to go, and he told me where later. I just knew I had to leave because the United States was getting sinful. And he said, if you don't leave, I'm going to hold you accountable for all the sins you didn't even do. So, of course, I obeyed him, and he told me where and how later. And I left my grandchildren, which was very hard. I see them once a year, but that's another story. So this is now where we are. We are in Cuenca, Ecuador, South America, obeying Father. And this is, shows you an idea of what the diorama has looked like for the last year. So you can see that the diorama is proven to be 16 years old. Now, we're finally at scene two. Scene two is meet the characters. And you are going to go to the funeral with me and all this is coming up. But for right now, you need to know who I was with all the time in the future. So the, remember I told you about the girl, the young, attractive young woman who was sitting on a rock and her son, uh, which I found out later was her son, not just a little brother, was her son was, had his right hand on her left shoulder. So this is, I didn't know what her name was. I know now she's a real person, but um, at the time I just called her Mary Beth. That just seemed appropriate. So this is Mary Beth, and this is the son that I saw and sitting on a rock. Later I learned that she's married and that her husband is what she called him. I don't know. I don't know how much 
I don't know why there's a baby on her lap because she didn't have a baby when this vision started. She had another baby later, but not right now. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how father did it. But I see the baby and it was born later. So she has a husband and his name is Joe and his dad's name is Joe and their son's name is Joe. So she calls him Joe Jer, like Joe Jr. She called him Joe Jer. And this is their little family. The whole uh, vision will be shown to, it was shown to me from two families. So here's our nice normal little family. And here's the very powerful family. So on this side, we have Mary Beth. We have Mary Beth's younger sister, Genevieve, we call Jenny. This is her boyfriend. We're sitting in a park of a place that has a bridge that has three arches. And years later, I found out where I lived had a bridge with three arches. So this actually still exists in Atlanta. And I saw, this is Mary Beth's mom and dad. They were lovely people, lovely, born again, serious believers. And they believed that they were living in the last days and that they believed that 70 years, I'm not telling you this, I'm telling you what they believed, what, and it might be true, is that 70 years after Israel was uh, formed, came back into being a state, that Jesus Yeshua was going to come back. And they knew that it was getting to be, it had already been over 50 years, and they knew it was getting to be about time for him to come back. And they knew from the Bible some of the things that were going to happen. They knew that Mary Beth and her husband Joger were not saved. They were, you know how young people are, you know, I'm almost 70. I can tell you how young people are. They know everything. And, you know, sometimes they do. But this Mary Beth and Joger uh, just didn't feel a need for any kind of religious background, and they didn't believe the Bible. They thought it was uh, myths and fairy tales. So mom and dad, Rachel and Dan, knew what, that bad times were coming, and they knew that Mary Beth and Joger weren't saved, and they decided they were going to pay any price to get her as much time as possible because they believed that the longer the time that they could live through the horrible things that are coming, the better chance that they would get saved. And they did. So mom and dad uh, bought a house in the nice section of their town, which is uh, it's in Indiana, which is south of Chicago. And the house had a big basement, a daylight basement, had windows. And for from when they first decided this was only two years to where they actually were ready and it, it was used. And they told Mary Beth, they made her promise on her life and on her son's life that if this and this ever happened, that she would stop everything that moment and leave her house and grab what she could, whatever money they told her to keep money hidden in the house in low, in like $10 bills or 50s. And to keep this big box of money and to keep, you know, like a bob, we call it a bob, a bug out bag. They were kind of telling her to have a bob, but I didn't know about such things back then. So they made her promise. They even bought it. They bought her two of them. Uh, nice canvas bags full of, you know, a water, a granola bar, matches, you know, whatever. And she had those. So they told her, if this happens, you drop everything. You grab that bob and you grab some cash, as much as you have, and you leave. And they were happy that um, they had a four-wheel drive. It was kind of a Jeep type something. And sure enough, Mary Beth did. So it did happen. Mary Beth took off. She had some trouble getting up to South Chicago. But when she got there, and I'll tell you the rest of the story, this house was ready, and she did live longer, and she did get saved only because mom and dad thought ahead. Okay, so that is a nice, average, pleasant family. On the other side, this is a powerful family. These are not um, your normal family. This is not somebody who lives next door. Well, the first thing I saw, um, the first... After I made, which I haven't shown you yet, but I'll show you the wife of the general at the funeral in just a minute. But I saw um, the mixed race leader. That's all I knew about him. He was the mixed race leader. 
And as I said before, I was a little bit unhappy because I thought if there was ever going to be any kind of a fresh kind of a president of the United States, if that's what he was, that it would be a woman. I didn't expect a mixed race man. Okay, fine. Okay. So when I went to the Goodwill and I was buying these dolls, there happened to be two of these dolls identical. And I thought, okay, fine. I'll make one because I knew that his wife's mother lived with them and part time. And so I knew what she looked like, so I was ready to make her, and I didn't have another doll. At the time, I didn't know that these dolls, which are called the Lo Loving Family, Loving Family by Fisher-Price, and they have joints that move, and they're marvelous, and you can just about run over them with a car, and they don't break. It's a great toy. So I was just learning about them. They didn't have them when my kids were little. And I didn't know that I would be able to get a doll that looked more like the man I actually saw in the vision. So I used the one I had, and I invested a lot of time. Um, I knew he was much, much thinner than this. But this is the doll that I had, and this is the doll that I worked with, and I haven't changed. I could make one that looks more like him, but I didn't. This is the original. So these two dolls were identical. I made this one into a woman and put a, uh, an apron on her because she does live with them most of the time. And this guy, I don't know if you can see this. I'll try to hold it still. But he, he was chubby. I mean, I mean, he was too thick for the man that I had seen in the vision in the future. So I kept trying to make him thinner, and I took some weight off of his side, and, his, and I never did get a, because they're made well. So, but I was um, taking an X-Acto knife, you know, that razor blade in the handle, and I was cutting him, cutting his face to be able to make him look thinner. I never did get him to look thin enough as to what I thought he looked like in the vision and what he does look like. So... This man is a mixed race leader that I accidentally cut so much off his face, I went through the skin and had to repair it. This is the mixed race leader. Then his wife, I knew, as being exceptionally tall. So he just fell. Um, because these are exactly, like I had said before, um, a woman is going to be about five inches tall-ish. And I knew she was exceptionally tall, so I gave her two um, what am I going to call those? Stands? Um, so she has two layers to stand on to make her look the right height compared to him. This woman is um, uh, interested in money and power, and that's all I'll say. But this is the wife of the mixed race leader. And they had... It, it's, it's unusual and scary that I would even know that they had children or what kind or how. But I saw that they had two children who were both girls. And sure enough, they do. So this was the unusually tall daughter. And this was the cute little charming daughter. And I, I don't know how I knew there were two, but in the future, I saw that the mixed race leader and his very tall wife had a very tall daughter and a normal sized daughter. And then I, this person, I absolutely believed this was the mixed race leader's sister, but I knew she was exceptionally powerful. And I, I just thought that was the mixed race leader's sister. And then when these things really started to come true, I found out, <clears throat> excuse me, that she's not the sister. This is, um, I don't know if I should name names, but this woman is a very, very number one important advisor to the mixed race leader. And when you see him, you see her a lot. And they are about the same color, and they had about the same kind of hair. So I can see why I was wrong and thought they were sister and brother, but they're not. This is somebody else. So I will now show you, uh, after I got all the dolls done, to, to give an idea of the people I knew from the future, I started seeing things that were like something those people would have. I would see something once in a while, like in this case, it was a basketball. I saw this little play toy basketball, and I said, that would belong to the mixed race leader. So I bought it, and then more and more and more, 
And so now the mixed race leader has his own, I call them closets. It's their little hobby closet. And I have one for each person. Father was good about letting me know what they, what their personalities were like and what they'd be interested in. So this is the mixed race leader's closet. The first thing was a basketball. I, he has a trophy because he loves sports. I knew that. And I knew he loved beer, which I didn't understand because when I think of people who drink a lot of beer, I think of people who are chubby. But he's opposite. So I, after I put all this together, I learned that the White House actually had, he had designed and built a brewery in the White House. So he does love his beer. And it, sometimes they give it away as you know, a real wonderful treat. So I had, gave him a microphone. I don't know what this is for. This seems to be an Olympic torch. I don't know, maybe he's gonna be involved with the next Olympics or something, I don't know. But there's also, I don't know if you can see, that there are golf clubs, gold golf clubs. And there are, um, this looks like from England or something. It has um, the lion you know, with his paws up. You see that a lot. And then in the back, there are flags and a passport. The passport was strange because every passport I saw up until the last few years, every passport was always blue because it was from the United States. And this was a red passport. So, um, and these flags, I didn't, I didn't pay enough attention. I just was drawn to them and I bought them and I put them in with his closet. But now we know that this flag is an Islamic symbol. It has the crescent moon and the star. And come to find out, this is, I didn't know, this actually is, looks like a flag that maybe would be um, something he would be involved with. And when I was on the radio about a year ago or 10 months, the person uh, was talking to me said, let me see that passport. And I did take it out and I did it's glued on, That's, they're all glued together. But um, sure enough, it says this is a secret agent passport and inside it says for spies. And some people think that perhaps a mixed race leader might be uh, working for some other country. So this is the mixed race leader and his closet. The next one I'll show you is the wife, the unusually tall wife. And I had these Velcroed down. This is her closet. And it's so funny, I get little chuckles sometimes from what father told me to buy and to give to her and to put in her closet. And then when time goes on and I see things, I oh, father, you're ha hilarious. So this is a little hand weight, they're called. It's when you go walking and you put this thing. So here's a little hand weight, like when she walks, and here's a big hand weight. I didn't know that whoever was this, you know, important man that his wife would be into nutrition and health, but she is. She has a hair dryer and um, real gold, a tea service. She has a small god. She has candles. And it's so funny because um, when they first came into power, um, she was caught after she was so strong about you must eat right. And then she was caught eating a pizza and having a milkshake. And that's what's on her uh, closet is a pizza and a milkshake. So, uh, and then she has gold silverware and gold dishes. And she has a mirror and a Chanel purse. And there's a little um, treasure chest, I guess I would call it, that's full of um, gold because she likes money. And she has on a diamond necklace, but you will see um, this is pretty amazing. And her closet is also, and all I can say is, it's a cinch, I didn't deserve it. I, I don't deserve for him to talk to me and have conversations, much less tell me all these details. I was just honored to be able to be the conduit for you.
So the next one we'll talk about is, well, we can go to her mother first. How did I know that her mother was going to live with them part-time? And this is what she used to look like with her glasses and her short hair. And now she's quite lovely. She has had perhaps some plastic surgery enhancements because she's a very attractive woman now and doesn't wear glasses, but she did. This is her closet. And all I had for her was a suitcase because she does in fact come and go a lot and um, a turkey. So she was there for holidays. And I would bet that, I'm not a betting person, but I would guess that she likes Coke or something because there was a bottle here. She has a mirror, so she's concerned about her appearance. And she also had a candelabra. So this is everything for, I called it, when I gave them names, I called her Cece. This is Cece's mother and her closet. Now we can go to the children that I saw in the vision of the future of now. This is the unusually tall daughter. I knew that I had never seen such a tall girl. And sure enough, in real life, they do have an unusually tall daughter. And this was her closet. There are a camera. I don't know how I found all these things. Black fingernail polish, uh, a skull, a uh, little devil, an uh, imp, um, makeup. So this is maybe a normal teenager. You know, she's young and extremely tall. So we knew about her, and in fact, she's real. We knew about this little girl who I just always thought was really cute. And um, I just had toys for her. There is a sand bucket. Uh, I, AA stands for Allison Ash. That was, I thought this was the Ash family because um, he to me looked like when I, I didn't um, know anybody who looked just like him, but when I was going through the magazines to get a photo of someone that looked kind of like him, um, there's a man, there was a man, I don't know if he's still alive or not, back 16 years ago, there was a man named Arthur Ash. And he was a famous tennis player, a very attractive, light-skinned man. And so, I mean, this whole family was the Ash family. And his name was Billy and Cece. So she's um, AA. And uh, just fun little toys and beach, like she liked to go to the beach. And now we know that's true, too. This is pretty shocking still to me, and it's been a long time. And an interesting thing, too, is I chose a dog for them. I just knew it was their dog. So I don't know much about dogs. I've never, I had, at that time, had never had a dog. And, but I knew this was it. And so, and I painted it black. It, I don't know what color it was, brown probably. And uh, we gave it a little home and bone to play with and everything, a rope. And I went to Bible study for many, adult Bible study for many years. And my Bible study teacher, Linda Simler, who's wonderful, knows all about Hebrew roots and taught me, looked at that. She's a, a dog expert. And she looked at that and she said, Rebecca, that's the kind of dog they have. <laughs> so that was fun too. So uh, this is a black, I, I think you might call it a Portuguese water hound. So I have the entire family of the important people and the important woman, but I didn't make a closet for her. I'm not sure why. Okay, so that's everything in the, and they were impressed with money. That's everything about the powerful family. Now you have uh, know the people, the characters that I knew back then and that you will see as we go through all the rest of the future scenes. And now we'll move over to the funeral.